Hello again. I go back to the drawing board now to show you what we have seen in our previous little lecture. And that is, yes, we can try to monitor the amplification of a PCR product by the Savagreen method and that works quite accurately and it allows us to see and obtain curves that look about like that. I mean that in something that I would like now to call our sample A. We start with a high amount of template and we double with this amount at least initially with each PCR cycle. But as we said previously I should add that we ultimately reach something that we call saturation. So it's no longer amplified in an exponential way uh, but instead what we get is a curve that would remain uh, more or less constant over time. So no more amplification occurs from a certain cycle on. And we can do the same with a sample that I would like to call sample B. And in sample B we start with a low amount of template, in our case fourfold lower amount. And we again double this. So initially we get an exponential amplification but then ultimately we also reach saturation. So if we catch a suitable point, if we catch a suitable cycle where both of them are still in exponential amplification, what we can find is that the intensities of fluorescence that correspond to the amount of double-stranded DNA, that these intensities of fluorescence maintain the original ratio that we had in our original samples A and B because both of them are doubled with each PCR cycles and that's why we get the same ratio after a couple of amplifications. And the good news is that if we can now detect the fluorescence intensity, if this is about our, fluor our detection threshold, then we can actually tell the full difference between the two samples just like that, just by looking at this one cycle. However, if you recall, the bad news was that on the one hand, with a lower amount of template, we may not have even reached the level of uh, the detection limit, so we just can't see the PCR product yet, whereas with templates that uh, were present in high amounts, we may already have reached saturation and then we underestimate the amount of template that we actually have uh, had originally because no, we no longer amplify that exponentially up here. So it's a suboptimal idea to use just one uh, particular PCR cycle for measuring all the concentrations of PCR products. So what can we do instead? Well, just guess. Rather than drawing a vertical line, what we do instead is to draw a horizontal line, huh? something like that. So drawing a horizontal line, what does it mean? Well, it means that we choose a particular intensity corresponding to a particular amount of PCR product and we ask how many cycles does it take to reach that threshold. So let me draw this for you, just a second please. First of all, what I should tell you is that this is something that we call the threshold. We abbreviate that with T. And what we do then is to ask at what cycle, at what cycle do we reach the threshold? So in this case it's here. And you can do that for the sample A that has been present in higher amounts as well, then this is again our cycle where we reach the threshold, CT. So in this case it's CT of A and here it's CT of sample B. So what is that good for? Well, what we can now do is to ask how many cycles does sample B, let me show this by the pointer, how many cycles does sa sample B need in order to reach the same amount of PCR product as the sample A? 
Well, I think you can guess that. Because what you see here in this particular example is that you need two more PCR cycles. You need two more PCR cycles for sample B to come up with the same amount of PCR product as sample number A. In other words, sample B from here on, from, the from cycle number one on here, needs two more cycles in order to get the same amount of PCR product, two more doublings. So two more doublings means that from here on you need two more doublings, that's a four-fold amplification in order to reach the same amount. And that's no wonder because the ratio of the templates A and B initially was fourfold. So the ratio was fourfold. And as I told you before, by the initial PCR cycles, this ratio is being maintained. So even here, when the first sample reaches the uh, threshold of uh, that, that we defined here, the ratio between the PCR products in A and B is still fourfold. And that means you need to amplify the sample number B that is present in lower amounts. You need to amplify that over two more rounds in order to come up with the same amount of PCR product. So that's what I can tell you about this particular example. Let's try to make this more general now. And I better use a different pen now. So in general, we call this difference in PCR cycles required to reach a predefined threshold. We call this delta CT. Delta in mathematics stands for a difference. So it's the difference in the CT values that we get for sample A and for sample B. Now, what I told you in addition is that the ratio of PCR products, so in this case it's the ratio A over B, is being maintained from the initial ratio that was present in the templates. So that is being maintained as long as you amplify in an exponential way. What you will now need is delta CT more doublings in order to go from the amount that you had at this stage in order to reach the threshold that we predefined. So you need delta CT more doublings to compensate for the fold difference for the ratio that we had in the initial samples and that we still have when the first sample reaches the threshold. So if we translate that into mathematics, it simply says the ratio of A over B, the ratio of A over B, is nothing else but 2 to the power of delta CT. Two to the power of C T B minus C T A. This equation is really important to understand quantitative PCR and is being used throughout. So what I really want you to do is to keep that equation in mind and we will now try to apply it in our next little chapter. Thank you very much.